1041, welcome back. Well, if you are a lover of books, boy, do we have a treat for you. Best-selling author Steve Barry has a new book coming out tomorrow, and you have the chance to meet him this week at the Mark Twain House in Hartford. Now, Barry has written 23 novels. His books have been translated into 41 languages, with over 25 million copies sold in over 50 countries. He joins us now via Zoom to tell us about his latest Cotton Malone adventure. Steve, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. So this is the 18th book in your famous Cotton Malone series. And uh, first I want to talk about the character of Cotton Malone. He is a retired Justice Department agent who often finds himself in some trouble, right? What kind of trouble are we talking? Oh, this time he gets in, into a war between the world's oldest bank and the CIA over Bitcoin. Uh, this book deals with Bitcoin. I've, I've been fascinated by Bitcoin for a long time and I didn't know much about it. So I sat down for a year and a half, learned about it made this novel, created this novel. So the reader's gonna get a little education in Bitcoin uh, along the way in this book too. And not only that, but also a World War II treasure called Yamashita's Gold figures into it as well, which is a real treasure that was uh, hidden away in the Philippines in 1945. And I know this book is called The Atlas Maneuver, really rooted in history as most of your books are. I think I read somewhere that your uh, sources for these books are 300 to 400 sources. You really put in a lot of work, right? Yeah, I do. I spent about 18 months of research on, the, on a novel. I use three to 400 sources. I don't read three to 400 books, but I read big chunks of three to 400 books. Uh, and I try to keep things as close to reality as I can. That's my little niche that I've carved out, that my books are about 90% to reality. I have to trip it up a little bit because it's a novel to entertain, but I put a writer's note in the back of every book that'll tell you what I tripped up and what I did. So you don't want to read that writer's note before you read the book? <laughs> no, 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 no. I got a lady sent me an email once on that. We got real mad with me about putting that in the book. Of course, I wrote back and said, you know, we put it in the back of the book for a for reason. For a reason. Don't read it. Don't read it first. So this is the PSA for anyone watching. Read that last. But what I think is so great about this series is you say people can pick it up anywhere. You know, if they haven't read the first 17, they could start with this one. Yes. Yeah. The trick to writing a series is every book in the series has to be the same but different. And that's a that's a tall order. But I, I, I try to maintain and keep that. So, yes, you're not required to read the other 17 books. You just you can pick them up anywhere. I've had people read them scattered around, read them uh, however order you want to read them in and whatever history you find interesting. All of my books deal with something different from the past, something real, something that still matters today. And I weave a modern day thriller around that. Yeah. And. Cotton Malone, obviously, he has a following now. You know, this book has been around for a while, this series. Why do you think people gravitate towards him as a character? Ordinary guy. He's just, he's like a guy next door. He's not a superhero. He's not a Daniel Craig kind of guy. I always thought of him more as a George Clooney kind of guy. Uh, he's just an ordinary fella who can rise to the occasion and do extraordinary things when he has to. And he's a retired Justice Department agent. He lives in Copenhagen. He runs an old bookshop, and he kind of gets in trouble a lot. And he caught on, he, you know, from the Templar legacy in 2006 when he was created till now. So as I said, it's been 18 adventures, and I hope there'll be many more. Yeah, many more. I know you said you don't plan on stopping his adventures anytime soon. So we spoke about history, a lot of history in these books. You're very passionate about it. Could you talk to us about, I know you have an initiative uh, that you started with your wife regarding history, preserving history. Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, History Matters is a foundation that my wife and I created. We go around and help communities raise money for historic preservation. We actually did an event at the Mark Twain House about 10, 12 years ago and raised money for them. So we've raised about $3 million over about 90 projects around the country. Um, we enjoy doing it. It's fun to give back. It's fun to see these historical treasures be saved. If anybody has one and, and you know has an idea, you can go to my website, steveberry.org, and click on History Matters. Send me an email. We'll see if we can come help you out. That is just a wonderful organ, uh, organization that you started there. Now let's talk about this week. People can come and meet you right here in Connecticut. Tell us more. Uh, we'll be at the Mark Twain House Thursday night. I, it looks on the weather. It's going to be a little chilly up there. Uh, and we'll be there at the Mark Twain House at 7 o'clock. You can go to my website, again, steveberry.org, and under the events section, there's a link that you can get tickets to come see. Uh, we've enjoyed the Mark Twain House. I've been there, as I said, twice before. We're on tour right now, so we're, we're in Arizona, and we're going to make our way up to you on Thursday. 
All right. Well, that is very exciting. Congratulations on the new book, The Atlas Maneuver, out tomorrow. And we will have more details as well on our website, WTH.com. Steve Berry, thanks so much.